came back for more, huh? <laughs> Part three. We are now following Route 66 from Chicago, Illinois, all the way to Santa Monica, California. The good news is that I actually had a travel buddy, one of my best friends from forever. She's, we've been friends since we were like seven years old, I think. And she decided that she was fed up with living in Chicago and wanted to move as well. So we both packed all of our stuff that we had into the van and we followed Route 66. I actually had seen a TV program on PBS when I was a little kid about Route 66. And ever since then, it's just been one of my bucket list things that I wanted to do. So this was definitely something that I have been thinking about for a long time. Lists have been made, let me tell you, many lists have been made. So we packed everything that we could fit into this road trip and we saw a lot. Once you leave the Route 66 sign in downtown Chicago, you start heading south to St. Louis and on the way you go through a lot of the countryside of Illinois. And there are some touristy things such as this Gemini giant statue that people stop at and take pictures at but there wasn't really anything that we really wanted to see until we got to St. Louis in Missouri. The first real stop was at Blueberry Hill, which is a restaurant and music venue. A lot of famous people have played there. Still to this day, people go there and play. But not only is it a, a show venue, it's also a place of collectibles. The guy who owns it has collected so many different kinds of memorabilia and little tacky doodads from all different kinds of TV shows. He also has a couple of hallways in the restaurant of pictures with him with famous people. And it was just wild, the range of different kinds of famous people, whether politicians or musicians or actors, just all sorts of people have been to this restaurant and he's taken pictures with all of them. Right next door, there was a really cool record shop that we stopped by. One thing I think of when I think of St. Louis is a really great music history. Uh, Chuck Berry is probably one of the most famous musicians to come out of St. Louis, but there are a handful of other people as well. And just in general, it's kind of a fun place. They've got some quirky things. We definitely wanted to check out the rotating moon sculpture on the top of the Moonrise Hotel. The rooftop bar had this great view of the Del Mar Loop neighborhood as well. It was fun to drive around St. Louis for a while, but we had to keep going to our next destination. And on the way, of course, we had to stop at a couple of the goofy touristy attractions. The next really historic place that we stopped was the Boots Court Motel. It's super old, has been on Route 66 for a very long time, has great neon lights, and is really well kept up. There were a couple of women who bought this from a previous family who owned it, who bought it from the original owner, and each time it's been passed through different hands, things have changed a little bit. But the people who own it now tried to restore it as much as they could to that original look with the neon lights and the flat roof that it had when it first opened. When we arrived in the room, they had this Victrola radio playing old timey music already when you walk in the room. There's actually another motel later in our journey that did the same thing, and I think they probably got it from this. The next day, we actually made a detour from Route 66 through Arkansas. Route 66 does not go through Arkansas, but I was determined to get to this museum, and so we decided that we might as well make the stop while we're in the area. The Momentary is actually a branch of the Crystal Bridges Museum, and we wanted to stop there first because they have this crazy Onyx coffee lab, which is kind of like an experimental concept coffee shop, very futuristic. Having coffee delivered to you on a little conveyor belt might seem too mechanic, but there is something just kind of adorable about it, actually. Not to mention it's extremely good coffee. I love Onyx coffee. Big fan. We checked out the rest of the momentary, but it wasn't as big as it looks like from the outside, so we just headed to the main branch of the Crystal Bridges Museum. Which doesn't look very big from this picture, but I promise you it's huge. 
There's a lot of classical art and different eras of art kind of mixed in with each other and the first area that you walk through. I wasn't so into this as much as I was into the more contemporary artwork later on. They have lots of interesting pieces from well-known artists. The museum itself is owned by the Walton family, who also owns Walmart. So they have a lot of money to throw around. And luckily, they provide us with this museum that doesn't have an entrance fee. There's a Sol DeWitt painting. There were Chihuly sculptures in the water some Chihuly chandeliers. Even the building itself just was gorgeous and it was set up in a really nice way. And while we were walking around, it actually just started downpouring out of nowhere. So it was awesome to be able to see the building while it was handling all of this water. Apparently the way that the building is built up on stilts in some areas allows the water to flow underneath it. So the architecture itself was a piece of artwork to admire. That's a Calder sculpture. This one's by Gabriel Daw. It's really cool. They've got Liechtenstein. They've got Wiley. They had a Kusama infinity room. They also had another Kusama as an installation outside in one of the ponds. They have a whole Frank Lloyd Wright house that they bought from somewhere else and transported to this campus. And there's this huge Terrell that actually we weren't able to see the full glory of it because it wasn't the correct time of day. But at certain times of day, the light goes through the top hole and completely changes this atmosphere, apparently. We were there for a very long time, hours. But eventually we left, and when we did, we stopped at another super kitschy touristy attraction known as the Blue Whale of Catoosa. This is in Oklahoma, and you used to be able to jump and swim off of the Blue Whale, but no more. There are signs posted all over the place that say no swimming. But it's still a pretty crazy sight to see. Somebody just built this for their spouse. Crazy. And we headed onward to Tulsa, Oklahoma. There were a couple of things that we wanted to see in Tulsa, and the one that I was most excited about was this thing called the center of the universe. There's some kind of acoustic phenomenon going on in this area, so that if you stand in the middle of this circle on the ground and you speak out loud, the sound will echo back to you in a way that's completely unnatural sounding. It's as if the echoes from your voice reverberate back exactly as you say them, so you're hearing an echo at the same time as you're hearing your own voice. It's wild. You can see my reaction the first time I try it here. We checked out the area that used to be Black Wall Street, um, where the Tulsa race riots were, and looked around that. And there were a couple of really cool murals with James Baldwin quotes on the wall. But we couldn't stay long, had to keep going. And one of our last stops for the night was the Rock Cafe, which is where uh, the movie Cars is mainly based. I can't say I'm very familiar with the movie Cars, but I did take a picture with Lightning McQueen anyways. And then we headed on to a spot that was a bit more eye-catching. Um, this was one of the top things that I wanted to see, actually, on this entire road trip. I'm a big fan of neon lights, color in general, and I used to be, when I was younger, a big fan of kind of specialty soda pop. So when I saw this on that TV special when I was very young on PBS, I knew that I wanted to see it someday. So that's crazy that that happened. Stand there, <laughs> ready? I'm just gonna keep walking to show how big this is. It's, <laughs> it's still going, it's still going. Look how giant it is. That's insane. <laughs> Not only do they have this giant soda pop outside, but the station itself is filled with pretty much any flavor of soda pop you can possibly think of. It's all color coordinated and gorgeous. And there were a lot of people there stopping to buy their mixed six packs of soda. 
Very fun to look at. I'm sure my younger self would be pleased that I actually got to it. But again, had to move onward. Check it off the bucket list. Oklahoma City did look mighty pretty, but we actually didn't stop in Oklahoma City at all. We just kept going. We did see a really cool old car around those parts. Great color. And then we drove through a whole bunch of nothing for a very long time. We decided that Oklahoma has mostly grass and cows. From our experience driving through on Route 66, grass and cows, that's what you can expect. Just so many cows. And the next stop is gonna be Texas, but that's gonna be in the next video.